Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hi, folks. Uh, welcome again to another edition of the Pigskin Past. I'm your host, Joe Zagorski, and tonight we're talking about the second part of this playoff redemption idea where a team plays another team during the regular season and then somehow manages to play them again in the playoffs. Now, the 1973 Dallas Cowboys were expected to be competitive, having been only one year removed from a world championship. They made it as far as to the NFC title game in 1972. Uh, The Los Angeles Rams, however, had never gotten that far in their recent history, but they certainly got more competitive in 1973 with the addition of a couple of new slash older players. The Rams obtained the services of quarterback John Hadle in a trade from the San Diego Chargers and wide receiver Harold Jackson, who came to L.A. in a trade with the Eagles. Then the Rams started winning. Both the Cowboys and the Rams uh, met each other in the fifth week of the 1973 NFL season. The Rams held a perfect 4-0 record going into that meeting, and Dallas owned a 3-1 record at that point in their schedule. Now, this game between these two strong teams would say a lot in reference to how challenging each would be for the remainder of the year. The Rams had the benefit of playing this game before their home crowd at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Not that such a locale really mattered, but the natural grass field surface can sometimes take a while for a team like Dallas to get used to because the Cowboys play their home games on an artificial surface. But if you thought that Dallas possessed more team speed than the Rams, you'd best think again. But Los Angeles had one player who definitely showed off his speed to the Cowboys' defensive secondary. Harold Jackson was that player. He he stunned Dallas by catching, get this, seven passes for 238 yards. His four touchdown receptions in the first half of that game boosted the Rams to what appeared to be an insurmountable 34-14 halftime lead. But true to their pedigree, however, the Cowboys came back strong in the second half, and uh, they did, unfortunately for them, commit too many mistakes overall, and they just fell short, losing to Los Angeles 37-31. Now, the Rams would lose only twice during the course of the 1973 regular season, and the Cowboys rebounded from their loss in Los Angeles to post a 10-4 record uh, during their regular season, and that was good enough for the NFC Eastern Division Championship. As luck would have it, both of these teams would meet again in the first round of the NFC Divisional Playoffs in 1973. Now, one has to realize that back in that year, a team's record did not matter when deciding where a playoff game would be played. The only factor that mattered was where a playoff game was held the previous season. For example, the Washington Redskins played both of their 1972 postseason games at home. In 1973, they won the wild card, and they would play their first postseason game on the road at Minnesota because they were at home the previous year. So it was one year a year at home and one year a year away depending on what division you're in. Now because of that, and because Dallas had played both of their 72 postseason games on the road, they were slated to be the home team in their 1973 playoff game versus the Rams, even though the Rams had a better overall record. Now Dallas head coach Tom Landry had one major job to accomplish against Los Angeles, that being 
his team, his defense, had to at least slow down the performance of Harold Jackson. Remember those 238 receiving yards? He had to slow that down. The Cowboys could ill afford a repeat of that torching, and, uh, you know, the Rams really wanted to repeat it. Landry's defense managed to accomplish their mission as they limited Jackson in this playoff game to just one catch all game long. Uh, in fact, this second meeting greatly resembled the first meeting, only in reverse. It was Dallas that jumped out to a big first half lead, 17 to nothing. Then the Rams came back strong in the second half. Uh, the score stood at 17 to 16 late in the fourth quarter in favor of Dallas, when Cowboys quarterback Roger Stallback spotted rookie wide receiver Drew Pearson running a deep down and in pattern. Stolbeck threw the ball deep down the middle in the hopes that Pearson could somehow snare the ball over his two covering Ram defensive backs, and they were all over him. Somehow, someway, Pearson did manage to grab the ball, and an even more fortunate occurrence happened less than a second later when the two Los Angeles defenders who were covering Pearson fell down after leaping in the air in their attempt at knocking down the ball. Pearson jumped for the ball too, but he landed on his feet, and in fact he was probably more shocked than anyone when he noticed that nobody was in his way between himself and the Rams' goal line. Pearson's 83-yard catch and carry for the deciding touchdown gave Dallas a 27-16 payback victory over the Rams. It was truly a great moment of redemption for the Cowboys and the beginning of several years of playoff failures for the Rams. Thanks again for listening to this edition of the Pigskin Past. I'm Joe Zagorski, and we'll talk to you again next time. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hi, I'm Oz Davis of the Truly the Goats podcast here at the Sports History Network. I'd like to take a minute to tell you about quite possibly the greatest website of all time newspapers.com. If you're listening to this podcast or any of them at the Sports History Network, you're probably into sports history. And you probably also know that for learning about anything prior to, say, 1990 online, the typical search engines like are nearly completely useless. But then there's newspapers.com. Newspapers.com gives you access to over 640 million pages worth of news from North America, Britain, Ireland, and more, dating from 1798 to last week. Do up a search for Super Bowl I, the 36th Berlin Olympics, Wayne Gretzky's first game, whatever. Newspapers.com takes you there with historical flavor that search engines like just don't give you. And now get a free one-week subscription to Newspapers.com by visiting SportsHistoryNetwork.com slash newspapers. With a paid subscription, you'll also be helping to support the production of this podcast and other Sports History Network shows. That's SportsHistoryNetwork.com slash newspapers. Newspapers.com. Way better for searches than you know what I'm talking about. We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories, and Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io.